Is, is there any redemption in Messi scoring yesterday and Argentina beating uh, beating Nigeria? It was just a magnificent, not a just a sporting achievement. It was a magnificent human achievement to watch this tiny man battle the incredible pressure and nation's hopes on his shoulder. All that commercial pressure playing against Nigeria, who are the footballing equivalent of a can of fresca just shaken up and the top ripped off. And in the 14th minute, after having a terrible World Cup, the only time he smiled the whole World Cup was when Ronaldo missed a penalty. He scored, or I don't know if you guys watched it, it was one of the most exquisite goals in World Cup history. The context made it so wonderful, just pulling down a long ball with the deftest control, knocking it calmly into stride, and then driving it home, a stunning psychic release. I once interviewed a, a Uruguayan poet, an amazing man, Eduardo Galeano, ah. and he told me that Diego Maradona, he said, the, played as if the ball was glued to his shoe, but Lionel Messi, he plays as if the ball was stuck inside his sock. And in that moment, you watch that goal and you truly understand what he meant. It was beautiful. Um, uh I'm talking about in his soul. We need to get closer to the sock. No, keep Amin out of here. I don't want him in here. Keep the door locked out. Like, I don't know what he's doing today. I don't want him in the room. <laughs> Roger Bennett with us on ESPN Radio. So explain to me, though, what's going on with Maradona. Explain to me what's going ah. on where he's going crazy uh, after the game. He needs paramedics. He's going crazy during the game. Well, he said that he had neck ache. He said it was a bit too much white wine. It's possibly a bit too much white, something else. I mean, it, it, this was a extraordinary sight. He is, like, picture this genius, an, an American genius who then undergoes so much plastic surgery. He makes Jocelyn Wildenstein, the Catwoman, um, look like a, uh, like a normal-looking human being. And he looked in that uh, kind of presidential box as if he was acting out Jack, uh, Jack Nicholas's Frank Costello in the in The Departed, but Argentinian. He, he, Lenny Dykstra and Joe Namath, if they had an Argentinian baby, it would probably be <laughs> Diego Maradona. <laughs> and if you watch this man, I don't know if either of you did, watch Diego Maradona, captain Argentina to World Cup victory. He was great. He was great. He was a menace. Like he was, the, was he, I don't know if he was the best player in that tournament, but he was pretty damn close to it. Oh, my God. He destroyed England once with his hand impudently, telling the world immediately it was the hand of God. And then while my, like, 12-year-old heart was still being ripped out of my body, he then ran through the entire team like Earl Campbell, just blowing off, bouncing off one player after another. And just, uh, I mean, 11 players he ran through. He was phenomenal, one of the greatest of all time. But on the sideline there, he looked like either he's an early-stage investor in Giffy, giving the world one meme after another, or he's just spent the whole afternoon blowing rails, one or the other, probably both. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure what the hell he's doing there. I mean, if you were Argentina and it was a big enough circus already to have him with an Ublo watch on each wrist, just clowning around, it just adds to that sense of circus. But the problems are still there for Argentina. This is like a toupee on a bald man. They get through. They'll now play France. And Lionel Messi, he still looks. And I said this at the beginning of the tournament. He still looks like LeBron playing with 10 J.R. Smiths. And that's, that, that's a problem that's not going to go away. And unfortunately, his coach is about as much the coach as, Ty, as, as Tyron Luke. Roger, you sound exhausted. You do sound tired, but yeah. you're bringing it. You sound oh, you're tired. Great, but but you, sound like, yes. you, you sound tired, but what you are bringing to the table is poem after poem. How did you describe the Nigerian style of play? Oh, they're fantastic. They wear this jersey that looks like it was ripped off everybody who was a raver in the early 1990s, and they deserve to wear a jersey that's that effervescent because they are like a can of fresca that's shaken up and then just had the top open. They were fantastic. So they great. depart with their head held high. And if I am exhausted, it's because I'm staying at the Bud Hotel in Moscow. It's quite a place. It's quite a time. Pro fashion tip for the Moscow subways that I learned today, guys. If you're a powerful man, you're a big, beefy bodybuilder, big men, tiny, tiny briefcases. That is the power status symbol <laughs> on the streets of Moscow. Informal, informal polling suggests at least 70% of these tiny briefcases contain severed fingers. It's like it's the fashion forward future thing that will be coming to America soon. Men in Blazers present Encyclopedia Blazer Tanica. It's available now, and the Men in Blazers podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. 
I want to talk to you about the rest of the World Cup, but I want to also sink in to the entire life and times and history of Maradona because the drug use is prodigious and it's amazing. And I don't really think that people know that before Messi, it was Maradona and he was as big a degenerate as the sports scene has ever seen. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it depends whether you've seen him play, how you react to his antics on the sideline. I watched with wonder. I saw him dominate the world. He was this kind of squat thighed, low center of gravity, um, a gentleman who did his mastery of the ball. The ball, always, he didn't really speed towards the ball. The ball always seemed to find him. They called him Pibe uh, Del Oro. He was like an impudent street urchin turned prince. Um, and if you watch him and you see him now, I think it's impossible not to feel a true sadness. Um, if you only know him now as this kind of plastic, kind of clown character, I think a lot of people find his antics mildly hilarious. But I, I will say, it was for me, it was deeply saddening to see a gentleman who was a, a giant of the game kind of reduced, incapacitated. But at the same time, with great athletes who are creative masters, Often it's fueled by a darkness, the same darkness that made them, gave them that competitive edge, the, the same darkness that kind of fueled their career. It's impossible uh, to sever those two things. So potentially uh, both things go hand in hand. But that's the Argentinian circus. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a game that's built on passion. It's a game that's built on the gambetta. They love their players to slalom, to attack, to run through the opposition. There's a remarkable photograph that is on the front cover of many newspapers around the world, which is Lionel Messi surrounded by four Nigerian defenders. They are, they are, they are swooped upon him. There's no room for him to breathe, but he, you know he's going to bust out of that like a scene in the Matrix. It's honestly it's a photo a bit like me around pie. Like no one is getting that pie. No one is getting that ball from Lionel Messi. And both Messi and Mar Maradona uh, share... Uh, the same dreams for Argentina. Maradona, too, in 86, was one star, a LeBron, on a terrible, terrible team. And he led that team to victory. They now expect Messi to do, uh, to do the same. And it's going to be almost impossible for the poor guy to do it.